Hi there, thanks for checking out our repair channel. This is going to be just an overview of this particular unit. This is the Gallagher S16. Uh, Gallagher makes a smaller one called the S10 and a little bit bigger one uh, strength wise, uh, the S20. Uh, all of those three units are all in the same kind of packaging as this one. Uh, they're all the same thing, just di different guts on the inside. Uh, these don't come in for repair hardly ever, and usually when they do, it's usually not a fault of the unit. It's usually something um, with the battery being low, or has gotten uh, with the battery sometimes it goes low. It can sometimes throw a little curveball to the software that's on these things and make it glitch. And there's a way to reset it, so it's pretty easy to do. And we'll kind of go over some of that. Um, but these units are pretty slick. Uh, I say they're real compact in size. They're not very big. I mean, they weigh like four or five pounds. They're not very heavy. And uh, and so the other thing that's nice about them, they got this. Uh, they're made to, to go on top of a T post. And you see down inside here, all these little teeth looks like looks like a mouth. But um, it's uh, made to go on top of a T post, uh, 360 degree mount. So it doesn't matter which way you put your T post in the ground. You can put this thing on there however you want. So you just lay the T-post, knock in the ground however you want, set the thing on there, say in the springtime it's facing this way, and then say by midsummer the sun's come up a little bit you know, further away on this side, so you just pick the thing up, turn it, set it right back down, and uh, without even having to move the T-post. So it's really portable friendly, so it's a really handy little unit. Now if you want to keep it in one spot, you know, leave it on the T-post however you want. But you can also, if you decided to, if you have a wood post, you can take um, some long screws and go through, you know, either all these holes or one of the holes and run a long screw all the way through it. It's got a hole right there that goes all the way through. And you can screw it into a, um, a wood post if you wanted to. Um, so this, uh, this, for being a solar unit and for a fence charger, charger it's got some software uh, circuitry in the... Uh, circuit board on the inside and this other thing it has inside here is a little the upper area of this lens is a green light that flashes the lower area is a sensor uh, that detects how much sunlight it is receiving uh, and it kind of with corresponding with that little sensor and the software that's on there it actually manipulates the output of the unit you know either the output voltage output power or the pulse time in between pulses um, what it does all that stuff for is um, if you go a number of days on a whole lot of sunlight, this will detect that there's not a whole lot of sunlight for that day. And it actually will slow the pulse down to um, conserve battery a little bit in there. And it'll also, you know, depending on how much, however long you go without much sunlight, it will really slow the pulse down uh, to conserve the battery. And it says in the booklet somewhere, I think it's either two weeks or four weeks that it will go up to on a fully charged battery before the battery finally runs down too far where you can't run it anymore. Now, once the sun comes back out, you know, the thing detects, okay, we've got plenty of sun. Let's let the solar panel do its job and get some charge back into the into the battery. So, it's a pretty slick unit. There's not many brands I know of. I mean, Parmac, Zariba, Red Snapper, those guys, uh, Speedrite. I don't believe any of their uh, solar units, uh, portable ones or non-portable ones, uh, solar ones, or portable ones, have a, uh, any of that kind of software detection in them at all. Uh, so for a little fence charger, it's pretty smart little unit, and Gallagher put some pretty good thought uh, into these things, and, and the, like I said, lightweight when it comes to the, the physical weight of things, so taking it around on, let's say, backpack trips for your horses, or you got a camp that you're trying to protect your animals from, from bears or cougars or something like that, you know, you can put up a little temporary fence around there and put this on there, and, you know, with it not weighing a whole lot of, of weight, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't... Uh, cause a bunch of trouble to pack it around with you in a backpack or whatever. Um, it's made to go on a T-post, but if you're taking it with you, if you have, say, a metal stake of some sort, or metal post of some sort, you, it, it's, even though the, it might be about that big, you know, the post, you can stick it right up in the center there, and it might wobble on it, but at least sit on there off the ground. Um, these are fairly sealed up pretty well. Uh, they're not, I don't think they're waterproof, but they're pretty water-resistant. Uh, on the switch, it's actually a magnetic pickup. There's no physical contact uh, inside, so you don't have to worry about anything coming loose on the inside. There's a mag, there's a magnet up inside here that talks that basically talks to the on and off area of the board. Uh, so there's no physical 
switch contact to worry about coming loose or anything. So it's all done by magnets on the inside. So that's another nice little thing that it does. Um, now there's a green light on here that flashes with every pulse. Right up here. <clears throat> and it will flash red every once in a while. Uh, usually for either a low battery. Um, usually if the light's flashing red and it's clicking, that means your battery's low. But if it's still flashing, it might be a little slower pulse, but as long as it's still flashing, you're probably okay to keep it running. But if you turn it off for a few days, you know, a day or two, let the sun get in there and recharge it up and turn it back on, it'll probably go back to flashing green again, and then you're still ready to go. So the circuit boards hardly ever go bad in these things. They're pretty reliable unit. There's not a lot of stress going on with them. Things are kind of overbuilt on the inside, so you're really, you know, you're getting a pretty good unit for the money you spend on these things, so you're not going to be... You know, throwing it away and buying another one. Uh, most of the time, you might have to replace the battery on it, but that's uh, usually about all you have to do. Now, the thing that it will do if the light's flashing red, but you don't hear it clicking, so it's flashing every few seconds, every three, four seconds, it flashes a red light, and you can't hear it clicking. Now, these aren't very loud when it clicks. So, if it's not clicking, but the light's flashing red, there's two things that cause that. Sometimes a battery, but typically it's there's a, either low batteries cause this, and it's throwing a glitch onto it. So even if the battery's fully charged, it still shows a, a flashing red light. You can do a reset, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so you want it to take this screw loose. This is where your battery hides at. Sometimes there's a screw like this. Sometimes there's a little thumb deal you can twist off with your um, finger. Like a little knob. And that's where the battery hides up inside here. So just pull that back. And the battery kind of lifts out of there. They're just a little 6 volt battery. 6 volt, 4 amp hour. So you're like, I don't know if my battery is my issue or not. Well, you can test your battery to see if it's actually good or not. And fully charged, it should be over 6 volts. So we're getting 6.4 volts roughly out of that thing. So we're like, well, my battery test is good. Why is my unit still flashing red? Well, here's how you can reset it to get it back to square one. Because sometimes if a low battery uh, inside there can cause a, an issue inside here, kind of make it glitch out for some reason, turn the unit off, lay it face down. And I put new clips on these because they were um, a little tarnished on the old battery, so they got... I got new connectors on there, but usually they're bare metal. But basically what you're going to do is hold those two leads together. And what that does, it drains any residual voltage that might be sitting in there on the board from the capacitor being stored up or whatever. And so you just hold it there for about 30 seconds or so with the unit face down. That way there's no light in the room uh, that can get to the solar panel. Because it will run straight off the solar panel uh, without the battery even hooked up as long as it's sunny enough outside. And make sure the unit's turned off. But once you've been on there for you know 20, 30 seconds, then you can um, hook your battery back up. Just make sure you do the polarity correctly. And then once you do that, you basically uh, flip the unit over and you turn it on. And I would say about 95% of the time, that'll fix whatever's wrong with your unit. So. Because the other, only other bad thing about the S10, S16, S20 Gallagher units is um, they do not make any replaceable parts for these things. You can't buy a new circuit board. You can't buy a new solar panel. You can get batteries and knobs for them, and that's about it. But the good thing is circuit boards rarely ever go bad. And they've got a three-year warranty on these Gallagher, at least as of 2017. Or 16 that came out with a two, uh, three year warranty somewhere in that range. And so, if you buy one of these and thing craps out on you for some reason, always try that reset first. Check your battery, make sure it's over six volts. Uh, if you do those two things, it still won't solve itself. Within three year warranty, you can get these things swapped out for a new one. If it's over three years and you tried new battery, you tried resetting it, and it still won't work, then you know you're gonna have to throw it away and buy a new one. That's the only downside to them, but luckily, these things hardly ever go bad. So, you know, you buy one, you might have it for 15 years with no issues. Besides, you have to replace the battery maybe every three, four, five years, however often you need to replace it. 
So, but this was just kind of an overview of how this unit works and some of the little tricks you can do to fix a unit. So we're well, just going to put this thing back together. But if you're looking for a portable solar unit that's uh, reliable and will last you for years and is well built and lightweight, not a little dinky cheapo thing, uh, I would look at one of these. I mean, these things sell for about 170 bucks, 160 bucks, somewhere in that range. So they're not exactly cheap, cheap, but they're uh, not super expensive either. But you know, if you buy one of these, you're going to get years of use out of it. It's not like you're spending 160 bucks and then two years later the thing dies on you and you got to go buy another one. You know, they're they're going to last you for a long time. So, but if you got questions about this unit or an S10 or S20, you know, give us a call. Um, our website is fencerfixer.com. Uh, you can call us, you know, with the phone number that's on there. You can text us. Um, you know, we repair and look at all these different brands that are out there. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, let us know. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up. Till next time, we'll see you later.